Hello and welcome to Cold Outreach Success Stories, where we interview regular business people just like you who had a lot of success with cold outreach and other client acquisition methods on email and other channels. We go deep into their process with hot tips around how, how they target people, how they personalize their outreach to make sure that you take away some tips to implement in your cold outreach starting tomorrow. Today, we have Adam Rabi. Welcome to the show, Adam. Thank you for the introduction, Saurav. Uh, wonderful one. Have you tried applying to become a presenter? <laughs> I have been doing podcasts for three years now, so I have uh, this is not this is not my uh, this is not my first time. So it, I was terrible at the beginning. I think I still am learning, but yeah, it's always a no, journey. No, I, I think you're just fine. Good work. <laughs> awesome, Adam. So tell us a little bit more. What does your business do, and how do you make money? So uh, I'm Adam from Corpalooza. Uh, Corpalooza started out five years ago as a court calling agency, as a telemarketing agency, actually. But then we expanded more into a lead generation agency back in 2020 with COVID coming and a lot of businesses wanting to go online. So that was the opportunity we jumped on. And uh, yeah, right now we are a full stack digital marketing agency offering outbound lead generation, inbound lead generation, as well as some SEO and website uh, services as well. That makes that makes a ton of sense. So tell me a little bit more about your client acquisition system. How do you get clients? Right. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's the same process we use for our clients as well. Right. So um, my approach or the core Palooza approach is that we've got our main service is called sales in a box, right? So sales in a box is basically combining the best sales approaches and putting them all in one box for our clients. Right. The way we do it for our clients is the same way we do it for ourselves. It's combining a little bit of LinkedIn, a little bit of email and a little bit of cold calling all at the same time to go outbound because there are so many people that has the need, but doesn't know that they have it, right? There are so many people out there that would require services, but they they wouldn't necessarily go through an ad, go through a um, a the Google search. You need right. SEO for that to, for for you to be on top of that. So the best method, in my opinion, is to go and do some outreach, and 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 everybody does it, right? It's no secret. Everyone does the outreach the same way: emailing, LinkedIn, and cold calling. But the way an agency does it is the way it. That, that differentiates it from any other agency is that you have to be personalized. People sometimes rush a lot in, 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 in their outreach methods and they just go throw in the pitch from the first time. And this is why I like to use the term social selling, which mm -hmm. is getting to know your prospect, getting to know your uh, target, and then just having a conversation with them before throwing in the pitch, understand them, know their need before before getting to sell it. So this is what we do at Copalooza, and 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 we do it with the help of Sales Robert. Sales Robert is one of the uh, is one of the tools we use as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of other tools as well that we use uh, to 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 solidify, I would say, our approach. So yeah, we we do a little bit of LinkedIn followed by a little bit of email. Because sometimes people don't get to look at their LinkedIn messages. Right now, three years ago, it was a lot easier, right? Uh, but, but now everyone's using it. So you have to send a LinkedIn message and then send in another one and then combine it with an email and then give someone a call. So that, yeah, this is the process we use for our client acquisition. It's been proven uh, to work, actually, because if, if it didn't work, would be... Uh... Yeah, how flexible are we with language here? That's, yeah, so. totally. That's just a conversation between you and me, man. <laughs> so, yeah, right. So yeah, we, we, we'd be messed up if we if we didn't work because this is the same thing we use for our clients as well. Mm -hmm. So if it didn't work for us, it wouldn't work for our clients. So it wouldn't we wouldn't have a business. Awesome. Make, makes a lot of sense. So let's get deeper into your client profiles. What what types of what types of clients do you typically work with? Like what segments, what industries? Well, we work with all industries, right? But uh, I'd, I'd say my personal preference is uh, SaaS, software, and technology clients. They are they, they they are our longest clients. But we also work with supply chain, facilities management, um, accounting sometimes. Um, and we did do some work for um, big companies, right? Uh, whereby they would 
utilizers so they've got many industries siemens for instance yeah. they they've got so many industries and we've helped with uh, a little bit of this a little bit of that but i would say our ideal customer profile is someone in SaaS software or have got a service or a product to sell all right makes a lot of sense to me okay so let's get deeper into the copywriting aspect um because that's one of those things uh which seem easy on the surface but when you actually get down to writing a message it, it's very hard so how do you actually personalize what elements have you seen work better than others if you can share some templates that will be very helpful for the listeners as well well let me actually look for that but uh, i would say the copywriting you are correct i agree with you 100 percent. it's the most important part of uh of, of doing the outreach and and and, and the reason why is because everyone loves a personalized message, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and I've seen on on a couple of uh, softwares now that they give you the option to personalize images as well, uh, which is uh, I, th I think it's called Hyperize or something. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 a really important one as well. When you when you when you are very personalized in your approach, you differentiate yourself from others. Because I've seen a lot of uh, of companies try and reach out to me with uh, with the following message: Hello there or hello without a name. So you don't even know me. You don't even know if I'm your right target market. It's just this pray and pray approach, which 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 sometimes works, but if you combine it with a little bit of, uh, of, of personalization, right? But to use a copy that is personalized, you have to dig deep and choose a specific sector uh, or a specific target from the industries that you wanna, that you wanna go after, right? And I'm a man uh, who supports doing separate campaigns and doing some A-B tests, right? So let's say, for instance, instead of doing 1,500 contacts in one campaign, no, I would split them 500 each in every campaign where I focus on the uh, people who share the same traits, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to use a little personalization from their LinkedIn profiles as well. Uh, maybe give a note about the picture, give a note about the name, give a note about something they've written in their summary. Uh, yes, in the past, it did take a lot of time because you'd have to go through them one by one. But now I think AI is uh, is going smarter and smarter yeah. and it and it could help a lot with that. I'm not sure if you if you guys uh, can do that as sales Robert or not, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think it's it's an approach that works uh, very much. So choose something. Other than their name, other than their company, other than you know, just go in the extra mile, try and put something uh, that 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 is very true to them, right? So, for instance, I was I was speaking with someone the other day, and uh, I saw that they had a coffee. Obviously, you've seen that I've taken enough sips of coffee for this uh, podcast, right? I love coffee so much. So, what I did was that I I I, I go into their LinkedIn profile. I see him taking a picture like this, right? I see. So the first thing I do is I go into there and I type in connect, send a note. Hi, I'm Adam. I saw that we share the same love of coffee, right? So I would love to connect. Right. And what I did was I connected with them. And then the next thing I do is I don't send them a long pitch. People need to stop using paragraphed pitches, right? Oh God, I, uh, I've, I've seen so much data on this because, you know, on sales robot we have over 2500 customers you know doing this i have seen the data and it's terrible as soon as your message length goes past 60 words even 60 words that's all you get you screwed yeah. right you get less than 1% responses of course yes so 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 you need to be very straight to the point and 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 and, and yes some some people may go straight in and leave the pitch some people would do some more work it depends, uh, but but there's no wrong or right, right? There's there's what works for you and what doesn't work for you, right? But I I usually prefer voice messages. Uh, voice messages are very personalized. You take the extra mile and you actually do something that uh, that people appreciate a lot. So the next thing I did was send him a voice message. He said, "Right, I appreciate the personalization." This is the first thing he said. I appreciate the personalization. Thank you for sending me this voice message. It looks different than what everyone else is doing. I don't have a need for the service, but I would refer you to someone. And he did refer me to someone who needed our service. Uh, and, and we're in talking stages right now. So this is what I call social selling. Correct. Yeah. You get to know yeah. someone. And even if they don't become your client, 
they might refer you to someone. If they don't refer you to someone, six months down the line, they might come back and say, right, I remember this guy because he did something that's unforgettable. So I'm going to go back to them and give them a call. So this is what I like the most, really. Yeah. No, I, I 100% agree with you. It's it's all about that long-term approach and all about making sure that you have a certain brand image in their heads, right? If you're just going in for the kill, for the short sale, um, you know, it's like in the dating world, like you don't walk up to somebody, you know, immediately and ask them to marry you, right? That, that's not how it works, right? It's just that there is a, there's a timeline to all of this, right? And you need to play your game according to that timeline. Interesting. So that brings me to uh, one of my uh, one of my pre-final questions. So what uh, mistakes did you first make when you first started this cold outreach client acquisition systems? Oh, a lot, my friend. I've been through <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, of, of these mistakes. Uh, I think one of the mistakes I did, and I'll never forget that in my life, is that I was doing, um, it, it was one of the first times I was using uh, robots to do my outreach. Mm -hmm. And I think I messed up the personalization token, right? So I kept sending hi first name to every person uh, uh, out there. Oh, and it was just, uh, it was embarrassing, to be honest. Uh, I think the mistakes we've, we've, uh, we've, we've spoken about, sending long pitches, going straight directly into the pitch, uh, talking too much about yourself, and, and 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 trust me, the outreach is not just sending out messages. Yes, 90% of it's copywriting, but the copywriting needs to be smart enough to be written by a salesman, right? Uh at the end of the day, you're selling, right? Uh and 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 however, however hard you try to uh hide it, you're selling and the other person knows you're selling, right? So you need to be very smart with this. And one of the mistakes I did was to do long, 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 long introductions that people get lost. Another one is offering them something in the first message without actually understanding their need. So this was a mistake as well. You need to ask them questions. You need to put in questions to understand. Because for instance, I am a, a full stack digital marketing agency, right? So they might need outbound lead generation. They might need inbound lead generation. They might need uh, pay-per-click advertising. They might need SEO. So if I go straight in and offer them SEO when they need outbound lead generation, then I've lost myself a lead, right? right. So, uh, I like to have the first message as, as as one that is very simple, just trying to connect. And the second one to be a question, right? So one, one of the terms I usually use is, are you currently struggling with lead generation? Hmm. This question helps me understand whether or not they've got the need, whether or not they're struggling or need help, and uh, and and the best kind of people to deal with or or to have as clients are the people who know their problems and are looking for a solution, right? So if you don't ask, you'll never know. So I um, one of the mistakes as well was was not asking enough questions. Uh, the third one was rushing in and trying to book a meeting as soon as possible. Right. So rushing in, booking the meeting as soon as possible, without talking enough, without understanding enough even if they've booked a meeting with me, makes me go inside the meeting, um, unknowingly going inside the meeting, not understanding enough of what I'm uh, yeah. I'm going to do, what I'm going to talk about, who is this person, what do they do? So it's very important to do enough research before going in. And the last mistake I would say was not, uh, was not refining my search. Doing a broad search is one of the worst things you could do. Right. To be very specific about the target that you're going after, it's best. I always tell that to my clients. It's best if you book ten meetings from uh, from fifty messages mm -hmm. than booking meetings from five hundred messages. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's 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 all about efficiency. So yeah, that's uh, the these are some of the mistakes. I think I think I'm going to be doing some more along the way. So I think maybe uh, in, in in a year or two we will go back and have the same conversation. <laughs> no, I mean, it's always a work in progress. And I, I completely relate uh, to the efficiency point because one of the underrated aspects of cold outreach or less understood aspects of cold outreach um, is that how many people you actually piss off, right? As a person, yeah. yeah, because if you're actually booking 10 meetings from 500 outreaches, you're pissing off, kind of pissing off, like 490 people who didn't respond to you, right? Versus yeah. in the other... Um, 
in the other scenario, you're only pissing off 40. So that's great, right? Like, you know, even if yeah. or maybe you didn't piss them off, maybe they just didn't have a need, right? So that's what that's one metric I think people, more people should pay attention to. Like the efficiency. How many are you getting out of how many are you're reaching out to? All right. So no, that way we hundred percent. And 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 I'm sorry to cut you off, but there's something I want to add on as well. Yeah. Is that sometimes when salespeople are doing the outreach and people respond with a no, they they never respond back. Yeah. And this is this is a huge mistake, right? right? Even if they say, no, I'm not interested. Even if they hang up on you, never cut the ties. Always keep a line between you and the prospect because yeah. if they don't have the need right now, they might need you. So always leave something for them to remember you with. Right. Uh, I once had a client who worked with me and then left me on good terms, obviously, and then came back to me a year and a half later saying, right, we need your services again. Uh, so, so it's just because you always leave them with something that's good. Some people might say, no, I'm not interested right now. And, and people would never respond to them back. No, always keep the last message from you so that they will always remember that. No, I remember this guy He responded to me. Even when I said, I'm not interested, he was more keen about the connection than having the meeting. So sales is a long process, guys. It yeah. doesn't take a week or two. It doesn't take a day or two. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to build your pipeline always follow up, always nurture your leads, even when they're not interested. And then always try to keep a personalized approach. This is what I would say. Awesome. I love the tips, man. That's all uh, That's all I have uh, for you, Adam. I think this was a great conversation. I definitely learned tons. And uh, it, it definitely resonates. Whenever I talk to somebody who's doing a good job of cold outreach, they're actually saying the same things right to be honest it's just that the implementation is so hard right it's so hard yes. to resist the temptation to go and pitch it's so hard to write good copy that's centered on their problems and not introducing yourself so guys cold outreach is simple but it's hard at the same time so yes it is guys are implementing these tips and, and thank you so much for coming on adam Thank you so much, Rav. I appreciate you having me today. Uh, it was a pleasure having this conversation with you. I enjoyed it so much. And uh, and hopefully at, at least one person goes out from this uh, from this conversation with something positive. Awesome. And for all the listeners who want to find you, how do they find you? We'll just link it in the show notes. Well, they can just go onto our website, callpalooza.com. They can find me on LinkedIn, uh, A-D-H-A-M-L-M-A-N, E-L-M-A-N. So yeah, uh, if you if you ever want to find me, I think so of you, you'll take care of putting in the links and uh, and yeah, we'll take it from there. Awesome, Adam. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah. Appreciate you. Take care, buddy. Cheers. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. So that's all the time we have, folks. Um, I really enjoyed the episode. I hope you did too. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, whatever you can to spread the word out about Gold Audit Success Stories so more people can enjoy and learn from the show. All right, that's all, folks. Bye-bye.